Have you ever wondered what tractors work in the totalitarian communist North Korea? I did, and I thought I would make entire video to tell you about it, because I think for many tractor enthusiasts it might be a very interesting experience. Recently browsing Pinterest, I came across one of the photos of tractors at the military parade in North Korea. Today I invite you for a short mechanization trip to the totalitarian North Korea in order to investigate what tractors are used there in agriculture production and other branches of the economy. Let me be your guide, stay close and I hope we all come back from this tour safe and sound. I hope I got your attention. If you like my video, be sure to leave a thumb up and sub to be sure you won't miss my next episodes. And now, let's jump into a story. Let's start with the photo from the opening, which inspired me to record this episode. It comes from 2013 and it was taken during the parade celebrating the 65th anniversary of the independence of North Korea. The photo presents Cholima 28 tractors. It's North Korean production. Yes, you might be shocked, but even North Korea has its own brand of tractors. The tractor in the photo is a slightly modernized version of the Cholima 28 but in most cases, the tractors of this type, used by Korean farmers, look more like this. But the eye of seasoned tractor enthusiast will quickly notice that the shapes of the Korean Cholima looks quite familiar and it seems that you could see a similar looking tractor leaving the walls of another well-known tractor factory, but more on that in a moment. Cholima tractors have been manufactured since 1954 at the Kumsong plant located in the Pyongnam-do province. It is the largest factory of tractors and farming machinery in North Korea. Unofficially, according to American intelligence, the factory also conducts secret military production, including mobile TEL launchers. The history of the Kumsong factory began in 1954 where on the ruins of the chemical factory, destroyed during the Korean War, an agriculture machinery factory was opened. The facility was producing simple agriculture machinery and farm equipment, but soon they started also producing tractors. The first tractor that left the factory walls was the Cholima 28. The tractor was developed on the basis of the Vladimir T-28 imported from the Soviet Union. T-28 used to be a quite successful and very popular design in the communist countries at that time. Serial production of the Korean version started in 1958. The name of the tractor, Cholima or however it should be pronounced correctly, came straight from the Korean mythology and it means horse of thousand miles. Cholima used to be a wild mythical creature, a winged horse that was able to fly very fast and which was impossible to domesticate by human. The Cholima 28 comes with a two-cylinder, air-cooled diesel engine generating 28 horsepower. The operator could also use a 540 RPM PTO shaft. The tractor could optionally be equipped with a hydraulic system and three-point linkage. Yes, Cholima didn't have a three-point linkage as a standard. Most of them left the factory without it. The Cholima 28 was also available in a construction version as a backhoe loader or a crane. These are only photos I found. In the following years, the Cholima 28 project was modernized, the effects of which you could admire in the photo from the parade. Perhaps Cholima 28 was not some tractor masterpiece, especially since the Soviet version was not very sophisticated itself, but this new refreshed version of the Cholima looked quite good compared to those with cabins that look like a henhouse or shed on wheels. Yeah. 
At the end of the 1980s, work started on the successor of the Cholima 28. The Cholima 2000's prototype looked quite modern for its time. It had power steering and it was available in a four-wheel drive version. Overall, it looked all too good to be true and for something that could have been made in North Korea. It's quite likely that these tractors were imported entirely from China. Anyway, Cholima 2000 never went into mass production and it was produced in a few, maybe dozen or so copies, and the reason why was quite bizarre. Well, it turned out that the factory and its staff are not capable of producing such a modern tractor. Everything was missing – parts, tools or even qualified crew that could assemble it. The Communist Party decided to shut down the project and instead of it, they began the mass refurbishment of the existing Cholima 28 tractors. So imagine it, they decided to bring all these old, several dozen year old tractors to the factory and carry out a general restoration, including modernization, for example adding a new cabin, power steering and so on and so on. And all of this because they can't afford to make new ones. It's crazy, but it's North Korea. Those prototypes of Cholima 2000, which I mentioned before, still exist and are still used to record propaganda films and are shown to tourists during especially organized trips to their flagship farms. That's all typically for the party propaganda and building an image of success and prosperity. Wikipedia also mentioned several other models of Cholima tractors, but I did not find any photos or information about them, so I'm not able to determine whether any other models actually existed. At the turn of the century, there was also a lot to talk about the closure of the Kumsong factory, but it's hard to judge if it was true or not, because access to the information in North Korea is quite heavily limited. However, in order to resolve the doubts of the West, in 2017, the production of a new generation of Cholima tractors, model 804, started at Kamsong plant. On this occasion, the factory was visited by the North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un himself. We don't know much about the tractor itself. Initially, I thought that it was some kind of license and the Koreans were building these tractors from the Chinese parts, but unofficially, this tractor goes to Korea from China ready in full and all this through the Shanghai New Co Holland Company, a joint venture between CNH and the Chinese concern Saik. However, this is not a version of the New Holland tractor known to us in Europe. It looks more like the typical Chinese design, while on the internet it is not possible to look for any more detailed information. Everything we know is that it has about 80 horsepower and a four-wheel drive. Whatever it is, compared to Cholima 28, it is a still a gigantic progress. It is interesting, however, how many of them will actually be used and to what extent it was another propaganda play. Apart from Cholima, there are also some Belarus tractors in North Korea, but it is a rather a rarity. As a part of a humanitarian aid, Western countries also sent Western tractors to Korea, such as the New Holland TD-80, but this did not work there for long. The fuel quality in North Korea leaves too much to be desired, and anything newer than the old Soviet engine of Cholimas doesn't really want to run on it, and the fuel systems fake quickly. In addition, the Koreans got tractors, and the availability of parts or their price was also already a big problem, and if the problems were not enough, the culture of servicing tractors and the level of their servicing do not exist there. According to the statistics, as much as 43% of all tractors in the country are not operational at all due to the lack of parts, failure or simply lack of the fuel. For this reason, most of the work in North Korea is still done by hand and the level of mechanization is one of the lowest in the world. And this is how the North Korean mechanization looks like. Personally, I'm a little bit confused by the fact that in the world in the 21st century, there are still places such as North Korea. I hope you are interested in the topics of today's episode. Let me know in the comments what do you think about Cholima and structures in North Korea. 
If you liked my video, please leave a thumb up and subscription to be sure you won't miss my next videos. That's all for today's episode. Thank you and see you again in my next videos.